Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have six all new coastal DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree, and I tried to get really creative today. The first DIY, I wanna turn this little wood sign from the Dollar Tree into a really beautiful decorative palm tree. So I kind of want that palm tree trunk um, shape where you know it's like wider at the bottom and it slightly goes up towards the top giving that cool palm tree shape. And so I thought I can maybe get that with some of these popsicle craft sticks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hot glue this on and I just make sure that the bottom part is hanging completely off the sign like that with the top part secured to the sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both sides and I just kind of want to build out the bottom of this. And I wanted something strong um, for this so that it would give it the same structure that the wood sign is giving it. So popsicle sticks worked out perfectly. Now on this one, I'm just going to glue it side to side with the first one. So this one is kind of completely hanging out over the edges. So I will have to go back and reinforce that a little bit, but I just do a bead of hot glue along the edge and stick it next to the first one. Now I want to continue that slow, gradual bend of the outside of the tree. So I also do a popsicle on each side of the top, kind of continuing the same line from the outside. Now I think that looks pretty good. I think that's gonna work. And I couldn't really find anything that was like shaped like this already. So I just kind of had to make it myself. Now to reinforce the back, I just cut a popsicle stick in half and hot glue that onto the back to make that a little bit stronger. And we're gonna wrap all this um, in burlap, so you won't be able to see any of that. It's just gonna provide a structure. Now this is the burlap that I'm gonna use. This is the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I love this stuff. If you're not lucky enough to find this, you can always use the rolled burlap from Dollar Tree as well. I kind of wanted, um, the wrap around look for mine so it would kind of have lines and graduations on it. I think that kind of looks like a palm tree. So I just start by hot gluing it to the back and wrapping it around. Now with the shape being kind of unique, it didn't want to wrap super tight. So I'm just kind of getting it the best I can and then I'll go back and kind of glue my different layers of burlap together to make it look not so loose. So basically I wanna cover the sign and any of the popsicle sticks that you could see. I cut it, glue it to the back, and also kinda of glue it shut along the bottom. And then I'm gonna go back and just trim the bottom just to kinda of make it look straighter here at the bottom and not kind of a hot mess there. Now again, the layers were a little bit loose, so I wanna glue them. I'm just gonna use some tacky glue from Dollar Tree. I thought this would work better than hot glue because uh, the hot glue, you can kind of see it through you know, um, burlap sometimes when you use it. So I just do a bead of tacky glue underneath each burlap seam and glue that to the piece before it. And that just kind of made it look a little bit better. Now I saw a palm tree online um, that kind of inspired me to make this. I kind of wanted to do my own version of this. And a lot of the ones that I've seen had a lot of shells on the trunk of the tree, but I kind of like the simplicity of just the burlap on the trunk of the tree. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Now for the palm fronds, I wanted something that I could cut that's flexible, that, you know, is gonna have a little bit of structure. So I thought one of these placemats from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. Now mine is green, it doesn't matter what color yours is because you're probably not gonna be able to see it. So I just start out by cutting it in half. I wanted this circular shape because I could, thought I could get nice like arching leaves coming down the sides of the palm tree. So I just cut three rows out from that because I don't want it to be super wide. And I do that for both sides. 
what I want to do is have like enough structure to do like four leaves, leaves for the palm tree, like, you know, two on each side. So then I cut each one of those in half and it leaves me with these four pieces. You know, with it being green like that, it kind of already looks like a palm tree, right? But we're going to take this to a whole nother, another level. Don't worry. So I like it, but I kind of wanted the like ends of the palm fronds to be a little bit more pointed. And so instead of three, I'm going to kind of make it like one row at the tip. So I just kind of cut that gradually up making it skinnier. That way my palm frond that I'm gonna make on there will have like a skinnier tip, like a palm frond would. So I just go ahead and do that on all four of these pieces. I think four is definitely enough because we're gonna kind of build this out. We want plenty of room for our palm fronds that we're gonna build on here. So I think that's gonna work. Now to build the palm fronds, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use a luau skirt. So this is the adult luau skirt from the Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter if you use the adult or the child one. Um, it's just a great source for, of raffia from the Dollar Tree. And I, you can usually like take advantage of the fact that it's like tied to a string like that. The pieces are a little too long for what I need it to be, so. The little knots on the end really don't do me any good here, but this first palm frond was kind of an experiment because I'd never made one before, so I didn't really know what I'm doing. But by the time I get to the second one, I was a pro with this. So I want like pieces of the grass skirt or raffia to be sticking out on the sides like that on both sides, you know, kind of like a palm frond. Now I was starting doing it gluing it, cutting it like that. And I kind of wanted it to be more like leaning forward than that. Like um, they're a little too straight, that first row, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it and kind of keep building from there. But I do want it to kind of be angled down a little bit because that's kind of how palm fronds hang. So the next piece I just kind of overlap, kind of getting a more down direction on those. And I kind of do the same strategy where I'm just gluing a bundle at a time and trimming it down to size. Now, I was thinking there has to be an easier way to do this. What if I do both sides at once? So what I did is I cut like a bundle that's twice as long and then I just glued it in the middle like that and then kind of bending it down so that both sides are kind of like veering down like a palm frond. And I think that's gonna work a lot better like that. Now, since I'd already started at the top only doing one side, I do kind of have to go back and like fill in the area that didn't have anything just by cutting a bundle down to size and hot gluing that to the placemat. And you can already kind of see that like palm frond feel that we're gonna get from this. This project turned out so beautiful. I haven't decided where I'm gonna display it yet, but I love it. It is definitely a work of art. So um, I just finished all the way down and then my camera died, but all I did was trim off the little bit of fabric that I still had at the end. And it's got this nice palm frond shape. I'm gonna go in and trim it down, kind of give it more of the shape of a palm frond. And then I don't want it to look like super perfect. I want it to kind of look jagged and like all of the palm fronds are like a little bit different lengths. So I do go back and kind of cut it separately, um, you know, just to make it look like separate lengths. I also secure uh, some of them down a little bit just to make sure that I really don't want any of the green showing. So I just trim down a little bit more here at the end and I think that one is ready to go. Now I do plan to put rope down the center so you don't have to worry if you have like a lot of hot glue there in the middle, but I think I'll wait until I get all four of my palm fronds done before I add the rope. I think that would just be easier. So I told you I was a pro by this point, so I'm just cutting my bundles double length and then cutting multiple at once. So I had this huge pile of 
palm fronds and gluing them down. Now, that might be a little bit too much to do at once because you do kind of want that angle. So I kind of split that in half. And just do a bead of hot glue down the center of the palm frond. And I'm kind of bending them as you can see so they'll kind of fall down. But I'm definitely doing more at a time than I did before. And definitely doing both sides at the same time is the way to do it because this is kind of a time consuming prog, uh, you know, process. So you're gonna wanna try to speed it up as much as you can. So I just keep doing the same thing. I take like three or four of the little bundles off of the grass skirt and cut them all at once. I'm trimming the excess fabric at the end and finishing that off with a few more pieces of the grass skirt. And then like I did before, I just kind of cut it down into that palm leaf shape. And then I go back and trim it a little bit just to give it some fun jagged edges. Now you've watched me make two of these and I have two more to make, but I think you've got the gist. So what I do is I'm gonna take these, trim them down before, which makes it a little bit easier, just making them a little bit shorter. But I'm gonna take both of these and do the same thing to them that I did on the other two. And this is how they turned out. So we have four of the little raffia palm fronds. And don't they look really cool? I'm, I'm loving them. So I kind of want to arrange them not super symmetrical. So I'm gonna make this one kind of the highest one. And I just attach it to the burlap sign with a little bit of hot glue. I think it has like enough structure to stand up on its own with that placemat under it. This one I'm gonna glue down here, kind of slightly overlapping the first one. And then this one is gonna go up, but not quite as high as the other side. I don't want it to be symmetrical. And then we'll glue our remaining one down right here. So that's what we have so far. I think it's looking really super cute. This is kind of the structure. I still have the hanger and everything is kind of standing up all on its own. I was torn about what to use. I thought about using foam board underneath um, the palm fronds, but I think the placemat worked out perfectly. Now I told you before that we were going to use rope to go down the center of each one of those. So I'm just using Dollar Tree rope this is like the thinner brown rope they have at the Dollar Tree. And I just kind of cut it down to size. And we're just gonna hot glue down to the center, kind of covering up all the areas that we glued the palm fronds down. It's gonna like further secure it too. And it's gonna add like just another coastal touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four of our palm fronds. Now for the bottom two, you could kind of use one piece of rope and go um, from one to the other. I used two pieces, but after I went ahead and put them on, I thought I could have just continued that same rope and went down the other side. So that might be something you might wanna try. Or you could do four pieces like this. And so we have all of our rope down. I think this provides just another like little texture and a little bit more structure to the piece. And I'm just using my heat gun because you do want to clean up any of the excess hot glue that might be visible. Now I wanted to adorn our palm tree with seashells. So I wanted something like white and tan, something very neutral to go with the color scheme on this. So I picked up two bottles of these little shells from the Dollar Tree that are just like a classic shell. They're kind of white with like tan or brown on them but they're not real patterned or bright or anything. And I start by just gluing four to the four corners here of our rope. And then I'm gonna continue them along each rope all the way down the palm frond and kind of just adorning the palm tree. So I'm doing them kind of um, with the tip touching the rope is the direction I chose to do them. And I kind of laid them out first so I would know exactly how many would fit. And then just going back and hot gluing those to the raffia, to the little grass skirt, all the way down. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing on all four of the palm fronds, laying them out to see how many will fit, and then just hot gluing these on. 
Now, I said before that I've seen pieces made with like raffia, palm trees made with raffia, and a lot of them use different types of shells to adorn the palm trees, the palm fronds, and that's what I'm doing here, but a lot of them completely cover the, um, you know, the tree part as well with, with shells, and I think that would look really pretty too, but I kind of liked it. Um, with just the shells on the palm fronds, so that is what we're going to do here. But if you decide to make yours with shells on the trunk, you'll have to be sure to log on to my Facebook group and share it with everybody because I would love to see it. Now, where I overlap the leaves, it was a little tight in a few areas, so I do trim that up just a little bit so it's just not sticking out a lot there. And we have all of our little seashells glued to this project. What do you guys think about this DIY? I think it's so fun. Has a great structure. It has a hanger already. It is ready to go to hang in my house. And this is how it turned out. Our little Dollar Tree Raffio palm tree. I love it. I love all the different textures. We've got rope, we've got the raffia, we've got seashells, and we've got burlap. The colors, I think, all go really nicely together, too. What do you guys think about this DIY? I think it's really fun. Okay, up next, speaking of fun, I thought we would make just a fun sign with some of this craft board from the Dollar Tree. This is my favorite size one they have. I feel like the smaller pieces at Crafter Square are not a good value, but this one is fine because it's kind of a bigger piece and you can make a standalone piece like this with it. Now, I always like to take the little um, sawtooth hangers off of the canvases that I reuse from the Dollar Tree and so, I'm just going to hammer that into the back so I have a hanger and I want to do that first because this is going to have lots of stuff on it and I don't want to mess it up later. Now I want to bring out that beautiful wood grain so I put a thin coat of antique wax by Waverly on there and then I follow that up with a baby wipe just kind of scrubbing off as much as I can because even though I want to stain on there I want a very light stain and we're going to do just a very fun, easy beach scene on here. I'm going to leave the sky like the stain part, but I thought we would do like, you know, just different quadrants like this, like you would do kind of like mountain, a mountain painting. So I'm just using acrylic paint. This is the color Caribbean blue. And I just kind of do one corner to kind of look like water. Now I did stain it first, so I did have to go over it with a couple of coats to get like bright blue. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I did want it to be a little bit more level maybe. Um, so I did kind of add like an extra row here just to the top to level that out. Cause from the other side, what we're gonna do is kind of make it look like there's sand over there, like you're at the beach. Now I did kind of want it to kind of have like a little bit of texture, some white caps. So I go in with a small brush and some ivory paint and do a slight distress and kind of distressing that with a baby wipe as well, just to give a little bit of texture to our ocean waves or to our water. And then we're using school glue on the other side. So instead of paint, I kind of want to do the same thing, but from the other direction, overlapping the water to form a little beach. Now, at first I was going to paint this to like look like sand, but I was like, why would I do that when I could just use real sand, right? And so this is some of the tan sand from Dollar Tree. And I just sprinkle that over right where I put the school glue. Whenever I use sand for DIYs, I always like to use school glue on the bottom and sprinkle it down. And then I like to use spray glue on top to kind of give me um, some more security. And I like this multi-purpose uh, like aerosol glue that they have at the Dollar Tree. I've been having trouble finding this there lately, but any kind of spray glue is going to do. Now at this point, it's kind of like really wet. So I do try to give it a nice dry with my heat gun. And there was like a little area at the bottom here that you could still see a little bit of blue shining through from the overlap. So I did try to patch that in with a little bit 
more sand and a little bit more glue. Now, it was bothering me because I could kind of still see it and I totally didn't have any paint that was the color of sand. So we're gonna have to make it. I mixed brown and ivory and yellow together and I got pretty close. And I'm just gonna kind of touch out the bottom, um, just where you could kind of see the blue. I didn't want that to show in the final project. So that looks better to me. Now I need to decorate our little beach and I thought we could make it look like little like sea turtles, like returning to the sea. Now, these are actually from the toy aisle. These are the little grow creatures and I love using these for DIYs because they have lots of different ocean creatures. What I want out of this one is one of the sea turtles. As you can see, there's also a really cool little crab in there and they're just the right size for miniature or home decor. Now, I didn't really want a bright project, that crab, I'll probably save that for the 4th of July, but I did want it to look like I had like some sea turtles like returning out to the ocean, you know, from hatching. And so I have two of them. As you can see, they have stingrays, starfish. They have all kinds of cool little glow grow creatures. <laughs> and so don't be afraid to check there, especially for some coastal decor items. I always pick up a lot of great things in the toy aisle. Now they are kind of black and you know, that doesn't really look like sea turtles to me that much. I want mine to be a little bit greener. So I'm using some acrylic paint. I think this is the color leaf green or leafy green. And I just go all over and then I kind of wipe off the excess with a baby wipe, kind of going back and forth. That way I still get some of the dark color shining through, but we're gonna have kind of a multicolored little guy instead of just a black sea, tur sea turtle. But I have left these black before when I've done like coastal Halloween DIYs on here because it kind of made them look scarier. And then I also use a little bit of antique wax by Waverly just to add another little color texture to our two little sea turtles. And then we can add these to the sand. I just wanna make a simple, fun little beach scene with sea turtles in mind. Now, if you've ever tried gluing onto sand, you know it's not easy. I do a big glob of hot glue and kind of try to push that down into the sign, but I can't say that this was super dry. And I found that it was really only gluing to the sand and not the sign at all. So when I pull it up, I kind of have a hole, but that's okay. I'll just peel this off the turtle and glue this directly to it. That's probably not the best strategy though because it did kind of mess up my sand a little bit there. So I'll be smarter on the next little sea turtle. And what I'm gonna do is just use like one of those little spatulas from those Cricut spatulas from the Dollar Tree and just kind of carve out a small little hole so that I have a place to glue and that way the hole can be the size that I need it to be smaller than the sea turtle. I put hot glue in there and then just push that down. And that one worked way better. I found that that sea turtle kind of sunk into the sand a little bit better than the first one too, which I did have to try to go back and touch up a little bit. My hair is totally in that shot. And then I just go back and add a little bit more green to this, just to make them a little bit more green. I, that looks more like what a sea turtle looks like to me. And I just wanted a little bit of dimension on those, kind of make those look more realistic. I'm not really going to put like anything in the ocean swimming, but you can be creative and do like a fish or something out there. I thought something more abstract, like using a white paint pen to do like three little simple like seabirds, like, you know, flying out over the ocean. Just something really simple that's going to go with the color scheme. Now I love it as is, but I felt like it needed a little bit of framing. And so I'm gonna use the thicker white, like six foot nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and just do a simple rope frame. I want all of my corners to be rounded. And so I'm actually gonna start kind of in the middle of the bottom. And then just using one piece, I'm going to hot glue that all the way around. And this is kind of a thick piece of wood, as you can see, which is one reason why I did the thicker rope. I thought it would do a better job of framing that out. And then I just glue it with a seam on the bottom. Now, normally I do my seams like on the corners. Um, 
And I don't know, I might like doing it at the corner better because it was a little difficult to make this look decent here at the bottom. But what I like to do is add hot glue and as it cools, you can kind of mold it and fill it in the best that you can. Um, but we made it work. <laughs> And that's all there is to it. This was just a simple little fun beach DIY. Lots of character and I'm never gonna turn down um, the excuse to make like a sea turtle DIY cause they are one of my favorite ocean creatures. And this is how it turned out. I think it looks really cute. This would be really cute like size for like a bathroom or something like that. I know a lot of my viewers have um, coastal themed bathrooms. So this was just a fun little DIY for that. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I have a Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below. You'll have to come join us and see how creative all the crafty beach bums are. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is crafty beach on YouTube on all of those. Okay, you ready for another DIY? We are going to combine one of these beautiful blue long candles from the Dollar Tree and one of their little shore living ocean canvases. You guys know I love creating with these. They're so fun. Again, save the little sawtooth hangers. Those things are great. And I think that the canvas is going to be large enough to make a cover for our candle. So this is going to be a really quick, easy DIY and it turned out so cute. Now I'm just using a razor blade and cutting through the canvas down to the wood that's down below right on the front because I think this is definitely gonna be big enough and it's a little easier to cut from the front if you don't need all of that canvas off of there. You just have to make sure that you cut all the way through on the canvas. And I thought that this like ocean scene combined with the blue candle would just be such a quick, easy candle DIY. And so I kind of, I want to straighten out my edge here because the razor blade edge was kind of crazy. So I just cut that with a pair of scissors and then I'm going to lay that on top of my candle and kind of see how big um, I need this to be. I want like a tiny part of the candle to be exposed to show that it's a blue candle. And so I think that that's going to be good. And so I just cut that straight across. And easy peasy, we have like a canvas wrap and um, for our candle. So I just do a bead of hot glue down one side and I just roll the candle right on top of it to secure it. And then I'm gonna do this same thing here on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole canvas, put a bead of hot glue and then just roll the canvas right on top of it. And I did notice that, you know, <laughs> my top kind of lined up, my bat bottom didn't line up perfectly square. So I do go in here with a razor blade and just kind of trim that up a little bit just to make that look more square. But I'm probably going to cover the seams anyway, but I did kind of want like a straight line to work with there. So that looks better. Now this is what I'm going to use. This is burlap trim from the Dollar Tree. And it's very similar to some of the burlap ribbons they have, but smaller, I would say. Um, but burlap ribbon would work really cute too. I just wanted something with that color scheme. So I just glue that to the canvas at the seam between the canvas and the glass candle. Go all the way around, securing that with hot glue and trimming off the excess. And it's gonna give me a perfect seam down there, but it's also gonna give me a little bit more decoration for this candle. So I'm gonna do the same thing along the top with the same trim. Easy a peasy, just trying to pull that tight, glue it and trim that down. And we have a little ocean candle. Wasn't that easy to make? I'm always looking for things I can use these canvases from the Dollar Tree for. And I think this is a really fun idea. It's something that I have not made with a canvas before. We have a little ocean candle and this is not the only candle DIY today. We're gonna have another one a little bit later in the video. So stick around for that. But I think it's really cute. I think um, you could do the same kind of thing with like maybe scrapbook paper or something like that as well. But this was all Dollar Tree. 
Okay, check out these little white signs. These are the little whiteboard signs that are kind of newer at the Dollar Tree. I picked up five of those. And have you seen these? These were in the crafter square. They're like these monogram letters that have like wood beads on them. Now, originally when I saw them, I wanted to spell out the word B. There was a brand new box of these and it only had one E <laughs> because my last video was my, uh, my uh, B video from last week. And um, I said, well, if I can't do B, can I do my like a favorite word, beach? So I went through my box and I found all of the letters to spell out beach. These are great like wood letters, something that normally you don't see at the Dollar Tree. So once I cut the wood beads off of them, they are perfect for crafting with. Now I didn't really want mine to be black, it's just not my vibe. So I mixed some Caribbean blue with some ivory to give me a very light blue. And um, I think there's a Walmart color apple barrel cloudless is basically this color which <laughs> my son and I went to Walmart recently and bought a whole bag of paints because he was painting um, ceiling tiles for his school because he was a senior and graduated and the teachers asked him to paint ceiling tiles oh they turned out so cool and um, we bought a whole bag of paint and totally did not make it home with them we still have not found the paint and I bought this color <laughs> But since I'm covering up the black, um, I do have to go over it with a couple of coats to kind of mask that to get that light beachy blue color. And you could also see that there was black along the sides because it is kind of a thick letter. Um, and so I too use a tiny brush and I go around all the edges inside and outside and paint everything blue. What I wanna do is I wanna make like five individual signs and do some like giant like Scrabble tiles um, with these letters. I think the font is perfect for that. And so, you know I like to distress, so I'm just gonna distress it very lightly with a chunky brush and some ivory acrylic paint to give me that coastal feel. Now, I didn't realize that these signs were different. Some of them have three, some of them have two, but that's okay, we'll just kind of alternate. We'll go three, two, three, two, three. So we have five signs. Now, you could also do this in, with a Dollar Tree long sign and make a long sign out of these letters. That would be really cute as well. I'm gonna do like a shelf sitter with these because these are nice, chunky um, signs. And so I'm gonna start by just hot gluing the letter on. So there is our little B Scrabble tile letter. And Dollar Tree has great nails. They have some really short ones. And I thought that would be a really great way to secure the letter on there and fill up the hole from the wood beads. And so I'm gonna do that on all of them because I think it looks a little bit more coastal. I thought about using like some of the velvet thumbtacks, but I didn't really want anything to take away from the cute letters. And so I just glue all the different letters of beach to their perspective signs, just laying them next to each other so that I can kind of get it all lined up, everything is centered, and then nailing a small nail into each one. Now I wanna do like the values like a Scrabble tile would have, so of course I had to look them up. The B was three, the E and the A were both one, the C was a three and the H was a four. And I'm just using a blue Sharpie. I just thought it would be easier to write with, but you could totally use a paint pen or your Cricut for this. And I'm just going back over with another coat of Sharpie just to kind of make those stand out. Now, I do distress them slightly with a little bit of ivory too, just to kind of blend it in, kind of make it go with everything else. Now I'm not done with this. I thought we could use some of these beautiful new chipboard decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I love these. I was so excited to find these the other day at my Dollar Tree. They are new. And I wanna pick out like different things that are blue. So um, there's like a blue mermaid. This starfish has a lot of blue on it. That way I can use the existing colors and I don't even have to paint these. The seahorse has, has some blue on it as well. In this package, they have a little blue dolphin. And in this one, they had like a blue seashell. So I have like five different shapes. Everything has a little bit of blue in it. 
And then I just wanted to decorate like the tiles and the letters with these. And so I decided to kind of um, decorate the letter itself by just going like down, up, down, up, all the way across. So I do like a little shell here at the bottom of the B and I just hot glue that in place. That one was a little tricky to hot glue down because there's not a lot of closed spaces to put the hot glue. So I did have to clean that one up a little bit, but the rest of them didn't really have that problem. Here's our little blue dolphin. We're gonna decorate like our letter E here. And this was so much fun. How cute are these? I went to like, I got these at that big Dollar Tree um, that's in a Walgreens in a town, a couple of towns over. I was there returning college textbooks for my son. I'm so glad I stopped because I haven't seen these in my smaller stores yet, but hopefully they get them because they're adorable. But we have our shell, dolphin, mermaid, starfish, and a seahorse. Now I wanted to decorate them a little bit more and this mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree is my go-to for like small fishing net. Gives you that fishing net look, so easy. And it's a lot smaller than the Dollar Tree fishing line. Now, I do wanna decorate my tiles with these, but I don't wanna go too crazy. So I'm only gonna do about half of them with net. The rest of them I'll leave without. And I'm just gonna secure that mesh ribbon to the back, draping it over a corner like that. And I think that looks really coastal and fun. So we're gonna do the same thing here with A. We skipped E and I'm kind of doing the opposite corner, cutting a piece down and just simply hot gluing that to it. I'm kind of tight, kind of draping on that. And I think this really gave them that last little beachy touch that I was looking for. So I skip another letter and doing the left side again, we're gonna do the same thing that we did. We decorated the letter B and I think these little beach themed Scrabble tile signs turned out so cute. What do you guys think about these? The pieces are adorable. I can't wait to make more things with those little shapes and I love that I don't even have to paint them. So this is how they turned out. I think they look so fun and you don't really even notice that my signs were a little bit different. Um, I like the white sign for the coastal feel and those have been readily available, those little signs at all of my stores. They're nice, chunky, and they stand up all on their own like that. Aren't they cute? This is gonna be like a nice, large display. It's gonna cover like a whole shelf. Okay, you guys wanna make a seahorse with me? I'm gonna use one of these little wood seahorse signs from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. You could also use the one that has like the paper and glitter and all that kind of stuff on it. I always try to prefer these because they're easier to work with, but you could totally do it with that one as well. The thing that is gonna be easier about this is that I have raw wood so I can stain this. Um, I want to do a driftwood seahorse. And if you've seen a lot of my videos, you've seen that I've done this before with Dollar Tree um, driftwood. And so I wanted to see if I could do it with items from the Dollar Tree. So in case there's any areas that don't have like driftwood, I want to stain my seahorse, but I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm using Antique Wax by Waverly and a baby wipe and I'm just gonna blend that amount of stain all over, bringing out that beautiful wood grain and I did decide to work on the back of the sign so I didn't have to work with, a, um, do anything about the writing or anything that was on the other side. Now this is what we're gonna use from the Dollar Tree. These are the wood stems and I thought we could do a fun project you know, gluing the wood stems on the seahorse vertically like that. So they're gonna be sticking out. These things come in all different like widths and lengths. I noticed that when you buy a bag of them at the Dollar Tree, they're usually all about the same. Um, like they have real skinny ones, they have real like chunky ones. It just kind of depends and I'm gonna kind of need all of them. Like this package right here is some of the skinnier ones. 
And it's not like, you know, actual driftwood, but I think it's going to give us the appearance of that. Now, the skinny ones came in handy for like the little frilly parts of the seahorse there. And so I just start hot gluing these all over. I'm just kind of trying to put it together a little bit like a puzzle. And I want to alternate like the different depths since they are different lengths. They're going to be sticking out different amounts and I kind of want that variety and then I kind of go back with the skinny sticks to fill in any of the in-between pieces. Now this is an easy project but it's a time-consuming project which is why I have sped this like way up on rock and roll here um, to kind of show you my process putting this together. I'm just kind of following the edge and kind of this piece here with the little sail in the back of the seahorse kind of needs smaller pieces. So I kind of map that out a little bit by gluing those just face down. And that package, they were like big and chunky. See how they're all different? They look like they're all different kinds of trees and stuff like that too, which kind of helps with the driftwood feel. And this is kind of just like a completely different version of the driftwood um, seahorse that I did before, but I really like it. I think it's really interesting. And it's basically just a seahorse sign from the Dollar Tree, wood stems, and some hot glue. I found that the little tiny ones worked really good for the little snout there of the seahorse. And then we just keep building. I tried to not leave a gap um, that's not, I don't want to leave a gap that's too big, um, that I won't have anything skinny enough to put in. And so I do kind of think um, what, when I'm going around and doing this, but it's just basically like a big puzzle. I just want to cover as much of it as I can. And if there is any areas that I can't cover, I did stay in the back. So it's going to kind of, I think, all blend in. I've seen similar um, seahorse like driftwood DIYs online. Theirs were like pretty much all the same length. These are varying lengths, which I think even adds a little bit more to the character. I do flip it around and fill up any more gaps with some smaller ones. I'm just gonna leave mine the existing wood grain. I think that looks very driftwood, but you know, it would be really fun to go in and like you could stain or paint like the ends of them different colors and alternate colors that way if you wanted to make your seahorse like colorful. But I like the look of the wood. What do you guys think about this? The different depths and stuff like that? I think it's really interesting. I think this is a, probably another like work of art to go with that palm tree that we started out with. I'm really loving it. I did decide to color just one of my stems in with a black Sharpie just to give my little seahorse an eye about the same point that an eye would be on a little seahorse, but I love it. It was easy to make and really fun, and it already had a hanger on it as well. So basically, once you get them all glued on, you might wanna glue off any like, um, you know, burn off any hot glue strings you have, but this is how it turned out. Isn't it so cool? If you decide to make this, I would love to see it. And if you decide to get colorful with it, I almost decided to get colorful with it, but it was so cool looking. I didn't want to mess it up. So this is our little driftwood seahorse. I think it's really pretty. What do you guys think about this one? Okay, this DIY, I wanted to see if I could do something with one of the shore living bowls from the Dollar Tree. I actually just found this there the other day. I didn't have any of the dinnerware sets. And I said, you know, I, I don't need any dinnerware, but maybe I could use this bowl to make something cool. So I'm gonna try to kind of step outside my comfort zone and make a candle with this. So I'm gonna use a candlestick from the Dollar Tree. It's got that beautiful beachy blue on top, which I think is gonna go well with that um, bowl. And then I'm gonna take one of these long Dollar Tree candles. I'm gonna take this to my kitchen and put it in a pot of boiling water and let it sit there until all of the wax melts and then we can make a candle with it. That's my plan. <laughs> So this was kind of an experiment. It kind of turned out cool. I wanted just a fun beachy candle for my kitchen and something that I could DIY. Now, 
This is gonna be a little bit more secure, I think, than hot glue. This is the multi-purpose cement from Dollar Tree. I think it's kind of similar to E6000. So I do go around the rim of the candle holder with that. And then I'm gonna lay that on top of my, or on the bottom of my bowl. Now, normally I do hot glue combined with that because it's gonna take a while for that to dry. And I did find that to be the case. So I did add a little bit of hot glue just to get us started. And it actually worked really well. It was really secure together once I got it all in there. Now, I want to kind of cover the bowl part of it, and I thought maybe we could use um, the rest of this grass skirt that we used for the um, palm tree, I already forgot, palm tree DIY, um, to try to make braided seagrass. I've never done this before, but I thought this would be a fun opportunity because this candle was kind of an experiment and I needed something to do while my candle was melting. <laughs> now each one of these little bundles has four strings and I couldn't really braid four um, easily, so I decided to do six. So I pulled two from the strand next to it and then I'm gonna do three bundles of two and I'm just gonna simply braid it like you would braid hair, just a simple braid. You're gonna wanna glue down the string or, or tape down the string of your grass skirt. I taped mine to my mat, which is my silicone mat. It doesn't wanna stick well to it, but you might wanna tape it to something a little bit secure so that you can kind of tug at it as you braid it. And I'm gonna go all the way down. This was the adult size grass skirt until we get a long strand. And then I just tie off the end with another piece of that raffia. And we have like braided seagrass. I thought that this was a fun thing to try. So I'm gonna snip that off from the one next to it. And we have our first piece. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I thought we could kind of fill in that transition of the bottom of the bowl where there isn't like that pretty coral print to kind of make it look more like a candle holder, um, give it just some more character. So I just start by hot gluing a piece down and then just wrapping that around the top of the candle holder, connecting it to the bowl. And I kind of wanted to cover up like the white part of the bowl because I don't really want it to look like a bowl. I want it to look like, you know, a cool candle vessel. And I want to do a large like three wick candle in there since it's such a big bowl, kind of like you would get in a jar candle. So I kind of want to get that same effect. But even doubling up with, you know, the six pieces um, in the braid, it still doesn't go very far, so. Lots of braiding to do. I do six pieces again and braid two in each strand. And then when I start a new piece, I just hot glue it down to secure it. I'm not really keeping any of the knots or anything I make to keep it secure. I kind of just glue it down and um, without the knot at the end. So I just snip that part off. So that's about how far two of those strands last. So it's fun <laughs> to make your own seagrass, but it doesn't go real far. Now I found a nice mutant piece here <laughs> that actually had six on a strand. So hey, that piece made it kind of easy. And we're just gonna braid that just like we did the others. My husband was coming asking me, he's like, you know you're doing something in here, right? As I am boiling a Dollar Tree candle. And I'm like, of course I know I'm doing something here. <laughs> I was checking on it. And it does take a little while to melt. I just put mine in a saucepan and it kind of melts, you know, the bottom of the candle first. And then it kind of goes all the way up the hotter you get it. But it is boiling away right now. Now, I noticed that you could still kind of see um, the white bowl. There was still like a little bit of a line there at the top. And so even though I thought I was done, I do go in and do another strand here on top 
just to make sure that it goes all the way to the coral parts of the bowl. And I only hot glue that in areas that I think it's gonna need it to stick closely. But I think that looks better. And you can kind of shape it a little bit too to kind of take on the shape of the bowl. And I thought that was really fun, interesting. I'm gonna add some more seagrass to it later, but that thing I was doing <laughs> on the stove um, is my candle. So I need a wick. So I took the wick from that existing candle, that blue candle that we got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm only gonna have one of these. I ended up not even really using it because I only had one. And um, I don't know how important that is. I guess I'll find out when my candle burns all the way down. But I just cut the existing wick into thirds. I tried to kind of sand it up in there and I think it might be too late to string it in there. Maybe I should have done that before I glued it down, but I'm just going to hot glue the wicks to the bottom, um, trying to get them to stand up if I can so that I can add the wax from the melted candle in there. Now, I've never made like a Dollar Tree candle um, project this big. Um, so I probably should have known that I should have bought like more than one of the candle. It just seemed like a really large candle. But when I melted it down and then I just carefully pour that in, um, I found that there was not near enough wax in there. And I was like, oh no, this isn't full enough. My wicks are totally long enough and I'm just trying to arrange them into kind of um, where they would be on a three wick candle. Now I don't have that same shade of candle, but I did have another one of these cute little like turquoise candles. So I'm gonna go boil that. While I boiled it, as you can see, it's starting to set up a little bit, but not really. And so I kind of pour this one in. It's gonna mix the two colors together and it actually turned out really pretty. So one of my wicks was wanting to get sunk. So I do kind of grab that, make sure all of my wicks are standing up and then we're just gonna let this set. I noticed the colors looked a little different. So I did go in there and kind of try to stir up my wax a little bit without drowning my wicks. And we're just gonna let this sit. I let this sit overnight last night and set up into a beautiful candle. And I love this DIY. I think it turned out really fun and it was really fun to make. Um, I don't have, I'm not a big candle maker, but I think that you can add like scented oil to it as well if you want to have a scented candle. Now this is the next morning. Look at that beautiful color it turned out. I'm just gonna melt the top part of the wax with my heat gun and put one of these little plastic starfish in the top, kind of melting that down in there just for fun. I get those at um, on Amazon and they're available in my Amazon shop below. And I just kind of want to kind of form the candle around it. So I just melt the very top of the candle and put it between all three wicks. And we're just gonna let that kind of set up. Now, the bottom of my candle holder was white, but it was kind of messed up a little bit. And so I thought, you know what, I'll just cover that part of the candle holder with more of the braided seagrass. So using that same grass skirt, it's made a lot of DIYs today. I wanna leave like the blue part of the candle holder, but the white part I thought I would cover in some of the seagrass. So I just hot glue it there, right where the two colors come together. And we're gonna wrap that around. I think it's gonna kind of tie the seagrass on the top part of the candle holder together with the base of it and give it just another fun coastal touch. I thought about like melting some seashells and stuff like that on the top of the candle as well, but I kind of like the simplicity of just having the starfish in there. And I even thought about doing sand, but I didn't know how that would really turn out um, once you get to melting it. And so I start braiding lots of seagrass again. I'll have to try this technique again. I think you can also um, take your braids and like put them in steeped tea and you can dye them different like caramely shades um, to get like more of a stained sea glass. But 
This one's just gonna be like the light shade, the color of the grass skirt. And I've noticed that you think that you have enough and you never do, so just braid more than you think you're gonna need. <laughs> and I'm just trying to cover the entire base with that. And didn't that candle turn out really pretty? Now that I have a picture of it, I can test it out and burn it. I love having a large candle in my kitchen. Next time, I might add like a scent to it as well because I think that would be really fun. I love a nice scented candle. So this was my little short living coral bowl experiment. Let's see if we can turn this into a three-way candle. And even though things didn't always go my way on this project, I think it turned out really fun. What do you guys think about this? That is how it looks with like the seagrass on the top and the bottom with our beautiful blue candle inside with a little starfish melted in the top. I was really surprised to find this bowl. I was also really surprised to find all a fresh box of the shore living greenery with the cute little seahorses and shells and stuff um, at my Dollar Tree. So keep checking. They might be finding some boxes in the back that haven't made its way to the floor yet on your store. But I think this candle turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this DIY? Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can support my channel here at Crafty Beach. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos like this one. And you're also going to get a few other perks as well, including shout outs. I want to give a huge shout out to the nine Crafty Beach Bum members. Um, a huge thank you to Coastal Couple, I Am Mojo Jojo, Jamie Job, Karen O'Haran, Leanne, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Pamela Bergeron, and Susan Edmonds. Thank you so much. Your support keeps these videos coming. Okay, there is our sea turtle, and it is time for the final reveal. Don't forget to like this video, comment your favorite project below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. <laughs> Now on this boat and we all 
so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.